students today we are going to talk about the topic genetically modified plants and we'll talk in detail about how bt cotton is produced in the previous video we discussed about applications of biotechnology in many other areas so in agriculture we will take in depth so what is bt cotton it is a genetically engineered cotton plant having resistance to insects you know normally insects attack plants so pla plants des designed in such a way with new gene introduced so such that the plants can resist the pests now what is this bt bt stands for bacillus thuringiensis it is the name of a soil bacterium so capital t from the gen genus and t of the species bt so gene from this bacterium serves a very good purpose for crops to be resistant to insects or pests this is the bacillus thuringiensis picture you can see certain endospore area highlighted and you can see other than the normal things you know uh you can see bt toxin crystal shown there so we will understand this this bacterium produces different types of toxic protein poisonous protein which kills insects insecticidal meaning it kills sidal meaning kills insects but this protein is secreted in the bacteria in crystal form it is crystalline it is not soluble and it is named as cry protein the protein name when you write you will write c capital cry protein during their stationary growth phase that is normally when the endospores are formed okay at this stage a crystal protein is formed in the bacterium this protein exists as inactive protein see we are saying it is a toxic protein but within the bacteria it is inactive so it is called protoxin it doesn't harm the bacteria now scientists studied that these toxic cry proteins are very good to kill larvae they have a lethal effect on the larvae of certain insects of insects belonging to the order lepidoptera philoptera and diptera what are the insects belonging to this class the names are here they can be beetles as in lepidoptera some moths etc different types of beetle coleoptera tobacco bud worm which is infects tobacco plants army worm which includes moths and butterflies diptera flies like horse fly crane fly fruit fly so many flies mosquitoes also now this cry protein released from the bacteria they do not harm the adult insects they harm the larvae you can see the larvae this is a bowl of cotton b o l bowl of cotton so we are going to talk about how this toxic cry protein kill the insects clear now see action of bt cry protein when an insect starts feeding on the leaf of such a plant that is a plant having the gene modified with the uh, protein producing cry protein producing gene called cry gene or as we discussed in integrated pest management under organic farming and all we discussed that spores of bacillus thuringiensis can be sprayed on plants so whichever way if the insect happens to feed on the bacillus thuringiensis the toxin or the spores whichever it it ingests it will enter into its gut the digestive tract as crystals called protoxin but when it enters into the gut mid gut the digestive tract has got fore gut mid gut and hind gut running from the thorax to the abdomen so when it reaches the mid gut this active protein gets solubilized it dissolves how because the gut gut is that mid gut area of the digestive tract of the insect provides an alkaline ph the ph becomes high in the mid gut area and that high ph that is alkaline ranging from you know 9 to uh, 14 around 
uh, more than 7 that is alkaline so is the right condition for the crystal protein to dissolve and this hap happens under the action of an enzyme protein digesting enzyme called protease so the protein digesting enzyme protease acts on the crystalline protein see when it enters it is not uh, solubilized it's protoxin so because the ph is not correct for it but as it reaches the mid gut area you can see the change in ph it has become alkaline totally the crystal protein has solubilized here so activated toxin and this is because protease enzyme also acts on it. it. It breaks the bond. Clear? So it dissolves here. Now what happens when it dissolves? The dissolved active toxin binds to the epithelial cells of the midgut. The midgut area is highlighted here. You can see. So the epithelial cells binding, res uh, the toxin binds to the receptor of the cell. And it starts making pores on the wall, on the cells. Okay. So the epithelial cells of the midgut it binds to and forms pores that is ion channels throughout the gut wall. So once pores are formed in the epithelial cells of the wall, gut wall, what happens? There is excessive flow of potassium ions. There is a need to regulate potassium ions for normal functioning. But here there is excessive flow of. This causes swelling and of the epithelium and the lysis, bursting of the cells. Due to cell disruption, that is lysis, the insect is killed. So this is what is the nature of Christ uh, protein in the insects. This is how it kills the insect. So this nature of the protein was understood. And it was used to solve a huge problem. What was the problem? The problem seen in most of the crops such as cotton, cotton, corn, uh, brinjal, so many crops. Insects attack. Cotton mainly uh, gets bollworm infection. Bollworms are, we call all those which infect the bowls, we call them bollworms. Which one? The larvae. Larvae of especially uh, Lepidopteran order of insects are the most common pest in cotton plant. They just harm the plant like anything. So these larvae, that is the caterpillars, are the infective stage of the insect. How, what they do? They bore into the soft, tender and delicate part of the shoot of the plant or floral buds or the cotton balls. You can see how it is boring into it and making a big hole in it. So what happens inside the cotton lint which is developing will not develop well. So when they bore into the cotton bowl, balls, holes are formed and it opens the ball opens before maturing. It should mature only then the cotton yield would be good. So it, it opens before maturing. So what happens? The lint quality is very poor. So there is heavy loss of yield. Clear? Now coming to how the problem was solved. And this is as I said not only with cotton plant. It is with so many crops which are affected by a variety of insects that significantly reduce the yield and quality. So, I, as I said, it is not the insect, adult insect. It is the larvae. See, it lays eggs there and the larvae hatches out and it starts feeding on the sap of the plant. That is what causes the disease or the problem in the plant. And as pupae, if it grows and then it flies off as moth, again it will go on, the cycle will go on. So, this larval stage is the infective stage. And that too, there is a limit. That means the size of the larvae to a certain extent only will be uh, controlled. Uh, if it go, grows beyond that, this cry gene will not be effective. Clear? So, what happens? The extensive use of... Now, why we shift to such technology? Because extensive use of synthetic pesticides, which normally is done by farmers to minimize the losses that causes severe harmful effect on human health and environment. And any such conventional pesticide is not a long run solution. It is not a permanent solution because uh, pests evolve. They start tolerating their insect, insecticides. So, transgenic technology provides an alternative and innovative way and also eco-friendly method to improve pest control, uh, improve the pest control management programs. Gene coding for the toxic protein is named as cry gene. Here you will write small letters. In italics. Protein you will write C big. So cry gene. 
which is the first gene available for genetic engineering of crop plants for the pest resistance. The plants when introduced with this gene, they start producing their own insecticide. So, they need not be sprayed with any other chemical. Now, plants modified with specific toxic genes isolated from Bacillus thuringiensis. There are so many types of cry gene isolated now. Hundreds and hundreds of have been uh, isolated from the bacteria. And into several plants they are incorporated. Choice of the gene depends on which crop you want and which is the pest that is affecting the plant. You cannot put the same cry gene on any plant to control any pest. Several hundreds of Bt toxins are known. Each is specific to a group of insects. Okay, for your 12th class, you mainly read these three names, Cry1AC and Cry2AB to control cotton bollworms. Cry1AB for controlling corn borer pest. These are the names you are going to study. Anyways, we are going to read about what are the methods of introducing a gene into a plant cell. How do you make the transgenic plant? There can be vector mediated method. If you are clear with TI plasmid, you should see that video. TI plasmids are very good vectors to deliver gene of interest in plants. I will discuss that in brief here. And vectorless method, we discussed about biolistics using a gene gun to bombard genes on the plant cells. So, those are the two methods. Both the videos you can see if you don't understand the process. Anyway, TI plasmid, I will be discussing here. You know, agrobacterium tumefaciens is a natural genetic engineer. So, the TI plasmid of it is isolated. TDNA area which is the infective part, you know, uh, agrobacterium causes tumor, crown gall disease in plants. So, we are going to manipulate it. So, the gene is destroyed, that dis disrupt disrupted, the gene which is actually infectious is disrupted. And in its place, from Bacillus thuringiensis, uh, plasmid are isolated and cry gene, both cleaved with the same restriction enzyme and cry gene incorporated into the TI plasmid. Then this TI plasmid is uh, recombinant plasmid with cry gene is introduced back to the bacterium whose uh, plasmid was removed. Okay, now this is cultured. It is cultured in culture plate so that colonies form by cell division and all the colonies though that which has the cry gene will be screened and made to infect the plants which you have to modify. So tissues of plants are taken and they are injured because agrobacterium uh, infects the injured cells of the plants. So, agrobacterium also incorporated with them and infection is allowed. So, I will just magnify this and tell you how it is. You can see TI plasmid video for details please. So, the gene is delivered into the plant cell. The cry gene is delivered into the plant cell. Okay, the TI plasmid, tDNA area is delivered. So, cry gene also comes in. This happens because the injured site releases certain phenolic molecule. So, this is how the infection acts. So, or automatically, naturally, the cry gene is introduced. Now, this is micropropagated. That means from single cell, the totipotent nature of plant cell has the ability to generate the whole plant. So, many such plantlets can be formed. Whole tissue culture we will discuss somewhere later. So, this transgenic plants are raised through tissue culture. So, this is a Bt cotton. What is transgenic plant? Please go through the definition. So, that is how uh, advantages, see how it is blooming. Uh, advantages of genetically modified crops we will go through. Increased yield due to control of pests. Safe for the environment because there is no dependence on chemical pesticides. Uh, genes specific to the pests are introduced. So, you follow integrated pest management. That means, only the target, targeted pests are killed. The beneficial insects are not killed. And just for your information, so introducing Bt cotton uh, in India, around 2002 it was uh, adopted and then it was uh, uh, exponentially increasing. And India is now the second largest producer of cotton. So with that, this topic is over. I hope you understood. Any doubt, you can ask. Thank you so much. Please share, please subscribe and like.